Hello, my loved ones, and welcome back to the Soulmate Journey Empath. This is going to be a what do you need to know now, pick a card reading. But this reading is very special. And the reason for that is that uh, the channel was very generously gifted five decks of cards, uh, a white noise generator for me to work on some guided meditations and frequency healing for us to share. Um, and uh, some crystals that I'm using here um, in the reading today, as well as a couple of items that I can use personally. And this donation was made anonymously, but um, I just wanted to honor whoever contributed that by using uh, what they gave for us to use um, for the channel in this reading today. So, um, interestingly enough, I already tried to record this reading once and there were many little disruptions to the point where I got frustrated and I turned the video off and something just told me, you know, just go out on your front porch, take a couple deep breaths. And so I went out on my front porch and I looked down, um, in my yard and there was this very beautiful, a uh, red tail hawk plume body feather and there are a ton of autumn leaves where I'm at in Wichita, Kansas so this white really jumped out and it's been quite some time before uh, or since I've gone outside and, and found feathers right before a reading but I always try to incorporate them if I do. Um, red tail hawk is very special for me uh, that's one of my totems and um, uh, the spirit animal that I work with. And uh, also for all of us, for everyone that came to this reading today, regardless of which pile you choose, Red Tail Hawk is all about taking a higher perspective on the situation um, and, and getting in touch with your higher sense of things um, and, and to trust that as being your internal divine guidance. All right. So we have three piles to choose from today. Pile number one has these beautiful little tiger's eye hearts. These were one of the gifts donated to the channel. So I put three of them out here. Pile number two is this beautiful purple fluorite crystal heart. And pile number three is this lovely rose quartz crystal heart. So take a moment, take a deep breath, get in touch with that higher you that sees the higher perspective and see which pile you are drawn to. All right, hello pile one. If you selected pile one, you selected the tiger's eye heart crystal. And I'm just going to stick those up there for you while we get into your reading. So um, we will have messages using three different oracle decks to kind of get that uh, Red Tails Hawk perspective, the higher perspective on um, the situation that you're dealing with. And then we will get specific information using the essential tarot and messages to guide you in the situation using the heart knows your way oracle. All right. So from the flower of life oracle, we have mind. We enter and explore the mind to know and love it, not to force it into submission. You don't have to change your mind or make it different to what it is just because you don't like what it is saying. We are not battling the mind. We are making love and peace so we can embrace it. From this vibration of unconditional love, your mind and heart heal and open, coming together in harmony. Now, from this balanced place, you can do what Gandhi suggested to free the mind. Be the change you want to see in the world and be inspired by your divine love, wisdom, and strength. So, um, overall energy, this is about 
uh, overcoming your own thought processes, overcoming your own beliefs. We have Dolphin, Be Joyful, um, and this is from the Saltwater Oracle that was gifted to the channel. So with in this deck, Dolphin carries the vibration of the number seven, which is all about uh, persistence and being patient. And um, if you're finding yourself at some kind of impasse, um, this dolphin energy is reminding you to lighten up, to loosen up, to maybe not be so much in uh, your mental space and taking things so seriously. Um, to be patient with yourself, divine timing, and whatever other processes are going on in the situation. Then we have the unexpected rough seas. This is uh, number 25, 2 and 5, adding to 7 again. So this is really uh, what you're dealing with right now is really a test of spiritual persistence and endurance. Um, it is requiring you to not only be patient uh with whatever changes are going on that are triggering things for you, but to be patient with yourself through this entire process. And, um, you know, if you don't like what your mind is saying, take that higher perspective and try to understand uh, why um, information is coming to you and what is triggering about it. Um, because usually that's something that we individually can have control over, but with this be joyful and the unexpected is don't lose sight of being present in the moment of being able to create joy of being able to perhaps be spontaneous with the energy of the unexpected that this is the type of energy that can go with the flow with the rough seas here, um, and, and can go with what's going on instead of fighting against it. And also being reminded um, a lot of focus on the crown chakra and uh, recognizing that there may in fact be limitations um, that you see to being able to lighten up a little bit in this energy, like things that you feel like you have to have figured out or know. And... Um, this Oracle message is very much a reminder of like uh, getting in touch with being present um, so that you're not so much in your head uh, so that you can be integrated and balanced and handle whatever um, is going on around you or recognize um, patterns or indications of where you can be working on something where something doesn't fit, isn't aligned with you. Um, but to just be more flexible, flexible and patient are the words that keep coming to me for you, pile one. So from the angel oracle, which was a gift, we have honesty and communication, um, being very, very important. Um, so in terms of honesty and communication, this mind message is very much, um, pointing pointing us inward pile one at um, what is it that we are having a difficult time confronting and like how is it really taking away from our ability to roll with the punches and go with the flow of things and also from the angel guide oracle we have raise your vibration so what this tells me for you pile one is uh whatever is going on um in in your life in your situation that um that whatever you're kind of resisting it, if you can look at it from a different perspective it can transform um, what it feels like to be going through this experience or navigating this energy. It can transform it into something that you enjoy. Okay, so let's see. Let's get more about this situation in pile one, please. 
using the beautiful essential tarot, which were gifted to the channel. Absolutely beautiful cards all the way around. If you haven't taken the opportunity to subscribe to the channel, I invite you to. If you would like to schedule a personal reading, that information as well as my platforms and email are all in the description box below. So let's see, what is the situation for pile number one, please? Sorry about that pile one. We got, I thought my phone was on do not disturb and we got disrupted by a phone call. Okay, so we've got six messages here. Let's go ahead and get into it. So for you, pile one, the first energy that's coming out to describe your situation is the two of pentacles. Twos are all about finding balance. Um, there, there is something that you're stuck on that you keep going back and forth in. And again, a lot of mental energy, um, this honesty and communication, a lot of crown chakra emphasis here with these purples as well as this mind, uh, the energy of mind. The next energy is the 10 of cups. This is uh, water energy. This is all about happiness, about, uh, what you're very conflicted um, about which uh, decision or which choice or which direction that you want to go in um, that is ultimately going to be completely fulfilling your ultimate happiness here. And we have the Judgment card. This is a major arcana uh, judgment is all about that higher perspective uh, that was an intuitive message coming through at the beginning here um, about being able to take a higher perspective on the situation and, and feeling also like that a call has to be made, like a decision has to be made. Now, the other energies that popped out for you, we have uh, the temperance card, this is major arcana energy. Temperance is a card of patience. So it's actually very interesting that we had the numerology of seven come out in this situation. And it's also a card of balance, um, which is definitely showing up here in the energy of the two of pentacles. And with this energy of the mind, okay, this is really trying to um, be balanced within yourself, be balanced within your mind so that you can be balanced about the decision that you're going to make because you want to make the right decision here. Um, one that's going to lead to your ultimate fulfillment, to your ultimate happiness. Um, next, we have the energy of the Ace of Wands. Uh, this is an, a new, uh, this is a decision here. If you haven't made a decision, this is coming to clarity to make a decision. Um, but this is also a decision, a path that you are very, very excited about. Um, there's a lot of promise. There's a lot of potential for growth um, with the decision that you end up making. And it's, it's the beginning of a whole new cycle here because it's an ace. And then we have the energy of the eight of wands. Um, having the energy of an eight here, this is about putting the work in. This is about transforming the situation here. So um, this is getting movement. So like if you've been in stagnant energy with this vibration of the number seven pile one, um, this, this is about to shift. But what it's going to take for this energy to shift is your perspective about it. Um, there, it's like you're you're putting up some kind of obstacle for yourself, and um, you're being asked to be patient um, with yourself through this process uh, because it's also helping you raise your vibration. It's helping you master something. It's helping you evolve. So. Um, 
and definitely taking a higher perspective on things. All right. So these are absolutely beautiful Oracle cards. Uh, the, your heart knows the way. And I want to close this one out with some Oracle message for uh, some Oracle messages from this deck. So yeah, I, oh, I'm, I can feel your energy uh, very acutely right now, Pile One, for a lot of you, like the, the tongue tie that I just got is like going on in your internal dialogue, like with your internal thought process. Um, and it's because you are purging some things and any time that we're navigating like very challenging times or challenging energy with like the energy of this rough seas here, um, it, it, it stretches us. It, it tests our resolve. It tests our resilience and we expand, um, in the belief of what we are capable of enduring every time. So like this, this to me is like, um, just a huge thing that once you make this decision, um, pile one, you're just, it's, you're going to be in a flow. There's going to be this movement. We're going to go from the energy of a seven to the energy of an eight. Um, and it'll be easier to go with the flow. All right. Sorry about that. So the, the significant point for you is to trust this process pile one and, and recognize that it is challenging you. You're growing, you're leveling up. Um, you're getting, you're going to end up getting your ultimate happiness, um, with the decision that you make here. When you finally make that decision, when you feel like you're coming from that balanced place, um, everything is going to come together. So what messages, um, do you need to hear in closing on this situation? All right. So we got a few for you. The first one, pile one is your soul is magnetic. And, uh, this is number 50 carries the vibration of the number five. This is learning how to see this challenge as an opportunity. And also I had mentioned, um, you know, with this raise your vibration and making the choice from a balanced place that once you're in alignment, okay, this is like vibrational match and you will attract that, 10 of cups, that ultimate fulfillment, that ultimate happiness. The next message is remove all conditions. And this is number two. So this goes back to that original, um, message that I was getting that, um, you may have these thought patterns or these beliefs that, um, are creating conditions and that's why you're having a hard time going with the flow here because um, you're setting conditions for how this situation is going to unfold um, and there's a difference between having conditions and goals so even just flipping it that way um, and, and looking at it through that lens instead um, could live, could have this freeing of your mind. Um, so whatever is being triggered in you right now, uh, pile one, um, as you're like at this impasse, feel like you cannot make this decision. The, the key to finding the balance and getting the peace in your mind that you need to make this decision and just go for it, um, is removing whatever things, um, ways of looking at the situation or beliefs about yourself or the situation, um, that, that are holding you back. Okay. So next we have, uh, C beauty in others. This is number three. Threes are about alignment for me. And also, um, with that relationship that you have with the divine, with, uh, your team. So, um, this is in, in order for 
for you to, a lot of people are really good at seeing beauty in others, but they have a very difficult time looking inward and um, seeing that. And so I'm getting the message that this is so much less about, you know, you're judgmental and that's a problem. Although maybe it could be for some of you here, we have judgment and see beauty in others. Um, but I think this is more self-criticism. So um, be aware of where you are critical, how that limits you from finding your ultimate happiness. All right. And I love this to close. This is number 12. You can choose love. And again, we have a number three here as one and two added three in numerology. And um, so really, um, if, if you are struggling to get out of this energy of confusion, of feeling stuck, pile number one, um, be honest with yourself, reflect on what could be holding you back um, from being able to get through this, to process this. And um, with those intuitive messages out as well, um, really take that higher perspective on things um, for yourself as well as for other people and to give yourself that patience that love and to see that beauty in yourself. All right. So I hope that those messages resonated with you. And as always, I am sending you so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye. All right. Pile number two. If you selected pile number two, <clears throat> you selected this beautiful purple fluorite heart. And this is a great stone for the crown chakra. I'm going to go ahead and set that up there. We have oracle messages from the flower of life, the saltwater reading cards, and the angel guide oracle. So let's start out with those messages. The first message from the flower of life oracle is divinity. You are always connected to your infinite stream of divine guidance. Still yourself for a moment and allow it to flow to your awareness. Imagine a point of light within your heart center. See it growing into a golden flame. Feel its beautiful warmth sending waves of relaxation through you. This is the light of love, a guiding presence that is always with you. Allow your being to rest in this place. Trust this light knows you, always revealing your truth and essence to you. So if you selected pile number two, there is an element with the crown chakra in this divinity message of you needing to recognize and claim your divinity at this time. From the saltwater reading cards, we have... Number 26, sea anemones. Two and six add to eight. Eight carries the vibration of putting in work to transform something, to uh, co-create and manifest a change and get movement. This is boundaries. So um, I'm getting a very strong sense that if you picked uh, pile number two, you have been eroded down by a situation or relationships in your life where there has not been an equal give and take. And you probably feel undeserving of having reciprocity, of being able to allow and receive the love that you give to others. And with these two messages coming out at the very beginning, there is this need for you to recognize that this love, this positivity, this beauty that you see in others, you deserve for yourself. And as being uh, divine, as your soul being your divine essence, that in, in order to step into your divinity and claim your divinity here, there are going to be some boundaries that you're going to have to set in your life, in your relationships, in order to protect your own energy and to claim your divinity. 
The next message is number 30, the sea snake letting go. Uh, 30 carries the vibration of the number three. This is about coming into alignment. So um, big message here if you selected pile number three with the purple fluoride and the divinity, uh, you may be going through a spiritual awakening um, for some of you. And when that happens, it becomes very clear very quickly what relationships in your life are in alignment with who you truly are in your heart center, in your soul space, and who you thought you were, who you've been taught you were, who you were told you were. And um, it, it also may be that as you're just growing and evolving on your soul journey, you feel like there is this unequal give and take um, and the relationships in your life are not reflecting to you your divinity. If that is the case, this is a time for releasing, for letting go. Um, a lot of times when we are meant to claim our divinity, to find our soul truth, we have a lot of karmic obstacles to getting there so that we are more and more certain of who we are on this journey. And so um, boundaries and some boundaries that may be necessary for your situation pile too involves um, letting some people go from your life or letting some habits, letting some beliefs, uh, letting situations go um, because it's not in alignment with you at your core, who you are in your soul as a divine expression, okay? Next, we're going to get two messages from the Angel Guide Oracle. The first is inner child healing. And a lot of emphasis here, can't help but notice that echoes the Divinity Oracle message talking about the golden light. Here is this golden light. Um, and look at the beautiful protection offered to the inner child here. Yes, this is an angelic feature, but when we're talking about claiming our own divinity in terms of healing our inner child, what we're really talking about is reparenting our inner child, re-nurturing, re-loving, re-teaching the, the, um, the, emotional aspect of ourselves what is healthy what is appropriate what is in line with who you truly are and what what your um, needs are what is a good match for you so deep deep healing and activation going on for you in terms of your heart space and your solar plexus chakra um if you selected pile number two. And when we're empowering our heart and our solar plexus, we naturally will have better boundaries with people that it, it will transform our relationships to the point where other people are not um, expiring our energy. There is this reciprocal flow of energy with people when we have appropriate boundaries, okay? And next from the uh, Angel Guide Oracle, we have intuition and downloads. And again, a lot of solar plexus energy is coming through here. Um, what I'm getting is like you already know, like now I'm going straight to what my guides are giving me at this point. They are drawing me back to this snake that there is th that term that there's a snake in the grass. There is somebody, and you know it, you've been getting a lot of nudges, um, a lot of signs, synchronicities. You may have a sense of you just know it, okay, like uh, clairsentience, that um, these people are toxic or hazardous or dangerous to you. These situations, these habits, and that for your own divinity to honor that, for your own well-being, for your own healing and feeling whole and feeling complete, it is time to follow this guidance that you're getting. And what I'm getting for a lot of you um, is like a pull in your solar plexus that is, is, that is where uh, your guides are connecting with you to try to, hey, hey, wh like, we're... Pay attention, pay attention, okay? Um, 
So for the next part of the reading here, I will be getting into the essential tarot to break this energy down and get some more clarity. If you haven't taken the opportunity to subscribe, I invite you to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for updates about my newest content. If this message is resonating with you, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with someone else you think could find guidance in the messages. If you would like to follow me, my platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon are in the description box as well as the information to schedule a personal reading with me through my Etsy storefront. You will also notice that there is a link to the free virtual three-day Revitalize Healing Summit, and it will be taking place this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 13th, 14th, and 15th. This is the first Revitalize. I am absolutely thrilled to be participating. I will be presenting on Sunday the 15th about using the Akashic Records as a healing modality. So if you are interested in attending this free event, please do check the description box for the link to the Facebook group. So let's break down these energies and see what is going on here for you for pile two, please. Well, we have the energy of the high priestess coming out. So this is very much reflecting that intuitions and downloads. Um, you know, like you just have this niggling feeling. You know what you need to do. You've been thinking about this for a while. Then we have justice, major arcana. This is number 11. Um, and we have that reflected with the energy of the high priestess being a two. Okay. So 11, 11, hey, recording this on 11, 11. Um, this is a huge karmic completion for you, okay? Um, these restrictive situations, these situations and people that are depleting your energy, um, this is very, very karmic. So these are likely people, um, soulmates or family that you have past lives with. And then judgment, there's another card of karma here. Um, this is number 20, uh, Major Arcana. So, yeah, there is definitely an awakening happening here for me as an Ascension Guide whenever the judgment card comes up in uh, a reading, especially for my subscribers. This is telling me not only is this some kind of karmic completion, but um, this is about a wake-up call, okay? And the wake-up call is, you know, and this is coming out under this energy of the snake. Like, you know that somebody, and it's even a sea snake. So when I think of the sea, I think of water and emotions. Um, that this, this person is taking from you emotionally, and it's draining you, and you just know it. And... You know, I get that so much. Like, yeah, they're getting downloads here. But this also looks like a person who is stressed out. Okay? Like, ugh. Um, so if you've been feeling that way here, Pile 2, um, chances are you know who this person or what this thing or what this situation is. Um, and you're getting all of the intuitive signals, all of the intuitive guidance that it's time for you to take a step back and, and in some cases completely let go, okay? The next energy we have coming out for you is the magician. For the magician energy, this is about manifesting something new. You having all of the tools that it takes to get to the other side of this situation, to change this stuck feeling energy. Um, the magician for me is also about divine empowerment. But uh, more importantly, this is mercurial energy. Uh, the planet of Mercury is associated with the magician card. And this is a lot of mental activity, but also activation um, happening. And between the judgment, the intuition and download, high priestess, magician, these are some very, very powerful alchemical energies, some charged energies. Let's see, what else do we have? And there's the last. 
So, first out, we have the Two of Cups. This is water energy in here. We've got, uh, you know, the energy of a two or 11 coming out yet again. Um, this is about being on the same page, having that beautiful reciprocal equal give and take. And that is very much reflected in the energy that came out with it, which is the Six of Cups. This is love. This is commitment. This is reciprocity. This is balance. This is equal give and take. So um, for some of you, okay, this is going to vary because, again, these are general readings. So only take what resonates for you. For some of you here, um, I'm getting the strong impression that you are experiencing an activation or an awakening. And as you are experiencing this um, new perception of your reality, you are realizing um, where healing needs to be done, that these are inner child issues, um, but that in claiming your divinity, that there have been restrictive or karmic situations in your life or people, relationships that are no longer in alignment with you that you need to let go of. Um, if you are letting go this whole second line here is a beautiful promise coming in from the divine. Let me make sure we can see this well here. This is a beautiful promise coming in from the divine that you have all the tools to manifest an egalitarian, uh, equal give and take type of connection, type of situation, type of friendship, type of partnership. Um, but I'm definitely getting um, more of a, I'm definitely getting more of um, this being like a very close friend or, or uh, a romantic situation that you're just like, oh, oh my gosh, this really isn't working. And I know that it's not going to work. I know that this is toxic in some way, shape or form. And um, that wherever this situation is toxic, wherever it's out of balance, out of alignment, is pointing you to where this inner child healing is needing to take place. So I will next be getting a message to close out for you, Pile 2, from Your Heart Knows the Way Oracle. These are absolutely beautiful cards. And we are so blessed to be able to bring them through in this reading today. So what is the message of guidance for pile number two with resolving, resolving these situations related to boundaries and completions? What is the message, please, for pile number two? And we got a couple, but I'm going to keep them because I feel like you need to hear them. Oh, there's four, actually. Okay. So, this is absolutely beautiful. No, the first message for you, Pile 2, is you exist as potential. And I love that. And I feel so guided to put that here under the inner child and next to the magician, because this magician energy is all about your potential. Okay. Um, it, if you have run your course in a situation, in a relationship, and there is nothing left to be learned from it, you're just stuck in a loop and it's holding you back or it's, it's perpetuating some kind of toxic dynamic, toxic cycle. Now is the time to pull your energy back, have the boundaries, release it if it is no longer contributing to your growth. And we have see the world as beautiful. This is part of that divinity, okay? Um, pile number two I, it, your energy, what I'm picking up is that you are very, um, analytical, uh, very, 
nurturing, but self-sacrificing people. Okay. So part of acknowledging your own divinity is to recognize that feeling like you have to sacrifice for somebody else when it's not reciprocal is not unconditional love. It's actually conditional. And when it's out of alignment, when it's out of equal give and take like that, um, it tends to deplete our energy. The next message we have is you can choose love. And again, a lot of golds and yellows here, a lot of solar plexus, solar plexus being emphasized for you, pile two. And your final message is walk each other home. Walk each other home. So um, for some of you, um, this is something that you're letting go of. Someone else will be coming in that will be this reciprocal, this balanced, this seeing eye to eye on things, being um, being on the same page. It's It's a message to keep your optimism high and know that you can choose what truly makes you happy. Um, if this is someone that you have yet to meet, um, taking the steps that are needed to get yourself into alignment. If there's someone coming in that is meant for you, that's supposed to be a significant uh, person in your life, then you doing the steps that are necessary to free yourself will enable you to connect and align with that person. All right. So I hope that these messages have resonated with you, Pile 2. And as always, I am sending you so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye. Hello, Pile Number 3. If you selected Pile Number 3, you selected this beautiful rose quartz heart. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up there. We... I went ahead and uh, randomly drew, you guys know if you watch me, that my jumpers are my agreement with my guides. So these were jumpers for each of the crystals. These are oracle messages. And uh, I will be then clarifying and going in closer detail using the essential tarot. So your first message from the flower of life oracle is the wheel of life. The wheel of life is constantly moving. Embrace change and allow your fun, playful self to discover the adventure of life. Combine your personal wisdom together with your intuition to create a magical result and feel it flow through your body, mind, and soul. Feel your questions of life as creative excitement, an expansion of you and all. This energy and wonderment of life unlocks the door into your divine love, power, and wisdom. Push the door open and behold the light of your essence shining brightly from your inner star. Step through the door and emerge as a consciousness, multidimensional light being fully awakened, ready to serve on this planet and inspiring others to unlock their star. Ask the universe to show you something in the next 24 hours that you have not seen before. So very powerful message coming through for pile number three here. Um, if you selected pile number three, um, I just have to tell you from the beginning as an Akashic librarian, I, and the other Akashic librarians that I know resonate with Rose Quartz as well. You may be, um, an, have the aptitude or be an Akashic librarian. Um, but I'm definitely getting a vibe of you way showing through ascension, helping others through ascension and awakening in some way, shape, or form. Um, if not, this is definitely uh, my light worker pile. <laughs> um, 
And if you go and check out my Soulmate Journey Empath Facebook, um, I actually made a post uh, earlier this week where I shared the definition of what a light worker is. So um, I encourage you to check that out because anyone who is consciously trying to empower the collective and better the planet, the collective, um, is a light worker, whether you identify yourself as such or not. All right. So now we'll get the messages from the salt water reading cards. The first one we have is blue bottles, abandonment. And I can't help but notice there's all this orange, but a lot of indigo here, third eye chakra with this wheel of life. But the indigo is just jumping out at me right here, right now. And the number two is all about balance. It's all about balancing two forces. So... Um, right off the top here, um, one of the biggest triggers, um, that happens when you're a light worker or when you feel like you are a mission oriented soul is it can be a very lonely path and, um, going this way, following this, uh, intuitively guided calling that's been laid out for you takes you to solitary places sometimes. So my guides are, are bringing to my attention um, to be conscious of your perception that sometimes being alone is very, very valuable and that one of the lessons that you're probably working on here, pile number three, is to learn how to be alone without feeling lonely, okay? And this is the struggle if you are a teacher, if you're a light worker, if you um, are a coach, if you're a sage, a mystic, in, in some way, shape, or form where you are working with higher consciousness and incorporating it into our day-to-day -day world, um, that can be a very lonely, very isolated experience at times. But... It's all about this perception of recognizing that this is a time for introspection and healing. And that was why it's divinely guided. That's why it's provided. But the everything will change. It's all about finding the flow and not allowing your own perception to get in the way of you riding the flow of energy. Next, we have the lionfish, number 14, individuality. So number 14, one and four add to five, which carries the vibration of challenge, of some kind of obstacle, of some type of impasse. And the, the medicine or the healing for it in this case is to be your unique self. Be your unique self. So... Um, what I'm getting, and this may be for some of you here, pile three, you may have started like a spiritual practice or a spiritually based business. And, um, it's a huge departure, like almost an abandonment from what you were doing previously. And, um, it's, it, you may see it as, as a struggle, but what you're being asked to do is have faith that you will find your flow as long as you are being your authentic and individual self. Again, the indigo is jumping out very, very much here. Um, you may identify as uh, an indigo, but um, this is also... Uh, related with awakening, with enlightenment, with Ajna or the third eye chakra. Um, next, we're going to get messages from the angel guide oracle. We have listen deeply. Um, some of you could be getting a lot of clairaudient messages. Um, with all the clairs, I associate those with uh, Ajna, the third eye chakra. Um, but most people tend to think of the third eye chakra as only being clairvoyance, and that's not true. Um, clairaudience and clairsentience are also uh, related to the, the third eye. I am getting, you have so much support around you. Pile number three. Pile number three are pretty high vibrational souls here. 
Um, you have a lot of support. You have the support of your spirit guides. You have the support of the angelic realm. Some of you have the support of star family. There is so much guidance coming into you at this particular moment in time. And um, it's no surprise this reading is being recorded on 1111. Um, and, and that portal energy has been very significant. Uh, I encourage you to check out my 1111 a portal reading to go deeper into that. But you're on the precipice of something right here, pile number three. And you may have been on this very solitary stretch and transmuting that energy, um, the difference between being alone and being lonely. Um, but you're also honing in on your individuality and being so very supported in doing it. Um, it's just kind of learning how to feel and find the flow of energy so that you're working with it instead of against it, okay? And the next message is power in manifestation. Absolutely. And that goes back to your perception of the situation. Your perception is going to influence your opportunities and the way that you see opportunities moving forward. Um, for those of you that have started a spiritually based business and you're waiting for it to kind of get traction, um, you're being drawn to your perception, to the development of your third eye and using your power of intention behind uh, what you're doing. So being very clear on what it is that you want. And um, I think, uh, you know, my guides are telling me to share this, that, I mean, here we're, we're doing an entire pick a card reading with gifted decks. And um, as I've been building over the last year um, on this platform and figuring out what to do, sometimes I would like procrastinate and not have anything to do because I thought that I had to have it perfectly figured out before I started creating stuff. And that took away that channeling element of, of creativity for me. Um, when I first started doing this, um, what I loved about it was I knew that I'd found what my calling was um, as a way shower, as an ascension guide. Um, because I couldn't remember what I was saying in my videos. I was channeling from my higher self. And um, I would have to go back and watch my videos because I didn't even know what I said. Um, and, you know, it was difficult to consistently show up. But I did not realize that me being uh, kind of ambivalent, me being kind of on the fence and not clear about what I was trying to bring in to build was an obstacle for me. And, um, you know, there have been all of these blessings along the way uh, via donations and support from my subscribers. So um, as long as you are community building here, if you have started a spiritually based business or are looking into beginning one, as long as you are community building and, and spreading your truth, like the following will come. But you're getting a lot of deep guidance about this pile number three, about which direction to go. And what I'm getting with the power and intention is be very, very clear about what information it is that you are seeking so that you can get a very precise, concise answer that's in context for you. All right. So pile number three if you haven't taken the opportunity yet, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe and join this community of healing and unconditional love, I would love to have you be a part of my collective. Um, hit the little notification bell if you would like updates on all my newest content. Um, if you would like to schedule a personal reading, uh, the link for my Etsy shop as well as my platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and my email are in the description box. If you would like to donate to the channel, there are links for Cash App, PayPal, and my Amazon wish list. 
And if you are interested in attending a free virtual three-day mind, body, spirit conference, uh, the Revitalize Summit is happening uh, this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, November 13th, 14th, and 15th. I am going to be presenting on the 15th about using the Akashic Records as a healing modality. So if you would love to be part of this absolutely free virtual three-day event uh, with amazing speakers and modalities to incorporate into your holistic toolbox, there is a link for the Facebook group for the Revitalized Summit in the description box below. So we're going to get uh, some tarot here and clarify this situation that you're dealing with here, pile number three. So the first energy that we have out here is the page of cups. For me, the page of cups is being in an, an optimistic place, being in a place where you're looking up to the sky, looking up to the stars. And uh, Page of Cups energy for me is is also like our purest heart energy and a lot of uh, heart chakra emphasized here with the green in this card. So whatever this is, pile number three, um, where you have really you've really been coming into your own through this process, through having some time to yourself, some time to reflect. Yeah. And you're in touch with your heart and, and, and what you want. And you're ready to create it, to manifest it, to get it started um, in a tangible way. You want to build here with this Ace of Pentacles. You're anxious to get started. You really want to ground this in. Then we have the energy of the Three of Swords. And this is really, really interesting because I just absolutely love this tarot deck. I am so thrilled that we were gifted it um, because we can see the different chakras that are associated with these energies here. This Ace of Pentacles, um, head and root chakra, uh, crown and root chakra, about getting your beliefs in line, like grounding them into the 3D. Here, there is some disappointment that you have overcome where you're stuck between your head and your heart here. Pile number three. Um, three of swords is definitely more of a mental energy being in mental anguish. And um, this could be that maybe you had a false start getting something going. Um or you had to abandon something that was close to your heart and you keep getting this feeling that you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be fulfilled. You're not following your heart unless you continue moving forward and letting this happen. But with this wheel of life energy, there are circumstances that are out of your control in this situation right now. But it is divinely guided for you to have this reflective time to yourself so that you can truly get in touch with what you are going to bring to the table in this situation. We have the King of Cups energy. This is water energy. And it's coming out under the page. Um, there is some emotional emotional maturity that you have accumulated through this process while you've been kind of stuck and unable to really ground this in and move it forward, you have been leveling up and you are more in control of your emotions. They're a little bit more grounded and less whimsical um, or your, your concept of how you want to approach the situation is more practical and less whimsical than it used to be. All right. Oh, next we have the queen of cups and this is underneath the ace of pentacles. Um, and we do have extra here and then we have the ace of cups nine of cups. So 
what I am getting for you very strongly here, pile number three. Okay. For some of you, now that all the cards are out on the table, um, for some of you, there has been a situation with a person where you, the circumstances out of your control have taken you in separate directions and it has triggered abandonment issues for you. However, again, this is divinely guided for you to find yourself, um, for you to listen to your heart space, get in touch with your heart space, you know, ground yourself in process any of the residue and, and be clear on what you want. For some of you, there is a nice pairing coming in here um, with, with two people who are a match with this King of Cups, Queen of Cups energy. Um, but before this can come together, the reason why there is a separation of two people is because both of these people have to fill their own cup and, and go for what is going to make them happy before they can have this Ten of Cups together. Because the Ace of Cups plus the Nine of Cups is the Ten of Cups. Okay, that's for some of you. For the rest of you, um, this is more about, this has been like an emotional lesson, um, a period of emotional growth for you. Um, when the wheel's been turning kind of out of your control. But it's helping you get in touch with your intuition, purge feelings of abandonment, and really get in touch with who you are and what you want, what moves you. And I see this absolutely beautiful progression, King of Cups being more grounded emotionally, Queen of Cups, creative, a lot of sac uh, root-based chakra here, sacral chakra here, Ace of Cups being a combination between uh, crown and and root chakras, and then nine of cups being crown and third eye. So you are in a healing process right now. And if, if you feel called to be a teacher, you're a light worker, you're an ascension guide, it is absolutely important for you to continue working on and healing yourself. And as you do this, you will be clearer on the intentions that you need to go ahead and move forward and to find your flow in the energy. Um, this three of swords energy that you're coming out of is what is making it incredibly difficult for you to find your flow right now. Pal, so we're going to close out your reading with some messages from your heart knows the way Oracle. These are absolutely beautiful cards. Such a blessing for us to be able to share them. All right. And let's see what guidance do we have for you, Kyle 3. All right. And we had three come out for you. All right, the first one is you come from love. You are love and love is all around you and moves through you. Love is ever present everywhere. Next, we have find power in loss. I think that's a really powerful message for you here, pile number three, because there's an element of grieving that is necessary, um, and it's related to having some type of abandonment issue. But ultimately, you are coming into deep healing and empowerment, and uh, your wishes, once you're able to balance yourself, your, your head and your heart, and find that stability, you're going to have your own cup will be nice and full. And then you can go and make your wishes come true. And for many of you in pile three, I definitely believe that is through guiding and helping others. And I love this. Your final message to be is your purpose. So I definitely got that light worker vibe 
coming from you, pile three, and this message is just an additional confirmation of that. So I hope that these messages resonated with you, my loves. And as always, I am sending you so much healing, love, and light. Bye-bye.